an easy pillow cover knitting pattern. Hi everyone, my name is Norman and today I want to knit this super simple pillow together with you. It is constructed out of eight simple mitered squares, so perfect for beginners. All you need is a little bit of patience and the knitting basics, so a cast on the knit stitch and the bind off. I will show you the rest step by step so you can follow along. I will also show you how you can adjust the size of this pillow cover so it will fit your cushion perfectly, no matter the yarn or the needle size you are using. So let's head over to my desk and show you how to knit a pillow the easy way. But before, please like this video right now to support my work. Let's quickly talk about the materials you will need. You will need yarn in four different colors. I am using a very rustic cotton hemp linen mix by Pasquale called Nepal, but you can pick any other lightweighted yarn as well. Then you will need needles matching your yarn weight. Then you will need some scissors, a tapestry needle, a stitch markers, a crochet hook, buttons, and of course a tape measure. Of course, you also need a cushion and the pattern. It's the first link in the description below. And once you have all these materials cast on 30 stitches with a long tail cast on using two needles, um, because we need to knit a little swatch. If you want to skip ahead, kindly use the chapter function of YouTube and then knit across these 30 stitches in garter stitch. So knit across all stitches in rows for, well, around uh, 15 to 20 rows. We just need to figure out your cast on requirement. And once you finish those 20 rows, just bind off loosely and wash and block your little swatch. So I washed and blocked my little swatch here and now it's time to figure out the gauge. Take a tape or a ruler or whatever you have at hand and count how many stitches you need to cover five centimeters or two inches here in the middle. Ideally speaking, the swatch should be much bigger and you should probably um, measure out 10 centimeters and then do the counting. But I mean, we are knitting a pillow here and not a sweater, so you'll get away with the shortcut. For me, I need 11.5 stitches to cover those five centimeters. Write down whatever you need. And then you also need to measure out your pillow. My, I already did this. My pillow is 39 centimeters wide. And then we need to do some very simple math. So grab your calculator or your mobile phone or use your computer. And the thing is we will be constructing the pillow using mitered squares and this makes things super easy. You just need to divide the number of stitches you counted by um, those five centimeters or two inches you measured out. And this will answer you how many stitches you need to cover one inch or one centimeter. In my case, this is 2.3. And then you just need to multiply this factor um, with the length of your pillow. And this will already provide you with the number of stitches you need to cast on. Well, almost. You need to round down to the next number dividable by two. So 90 is already dividable by two. And then you need to subtract one. So in my case, that's 89. And I will have to cast on 89 stitches for my pillow. Well, there's one fun little thing you also need to do. If you take a look at this finished mitered square here, then you can see that there are four colors involved and you need to decide for yourself when and where you want to change colors. It's totally up to you and your own preferences. But if you want the pattern to work out, it always needs to be the same for each and every mitered square. So in my case, I will knit 18 rows in black, 26 in white, 18 in light blue and the remaining 24 rows in the dark blue color. You could do something similar, but you can also, you know, just pick up uh, some crayons and paint a square on a square paper and then fill it out and, you know, 
toy around a bit and see what you like, which color combination and how wide you want those uh, stripes because that's what they are, how wide you want those stripes to be. And the beauty of a mitered square is that you will knit as many rows as you cast on um, stitches. So I cast on 89 stitches here and you will also knit 89 rows. So it's very, very easy to figure it out. Just uh, take your cast on and then distribute those stitches according to your preferences and according to the colors you have. I mean, what you could do instead is, I feel it's much more complicated. You could toy around with the needle size and the yarn weight until you meet my gauge and knit an exact copy. But where's the fun? And now that we successfully figured out how many stitches we need to cast on, we can start knitting the pillow cover. I will cast on 89 stitches using a long tail cast on and you cast on as many stitches as your calculation said you need. And again, I cast on around two needles because I want an edge that is as stretchy as the rest. Make sure to leave a sizable tail of around 15 to 20 inches. And because I'm very, very bad at counting, I will place a stitch marker after every 20 stitches. So I cast on 20 stitches and then I will place a little stitch marker. And once you cast on the required number of stitches, just knit across the first row. So just knit stitches mitered squares are knit in gara stitch. So it's going to be knit stitches across all rows. So very, very simple and perfect for beginners. I kind of apologize for the black yarn, but I figured, I mean, I wanted a pillow that looks super neat. And I hope you can still see what I'm doing. I mean, it's just knit stitches across the whole row. And then three stitches before the exact center, I want you to place a stitch marker. In my case, this is after 43 stitches. Then knit one stitch, purl one stitch, and then continue uh, knitting across. So you purl the exact center stitch and the rest is just knit stitches. And once you finish that row, simply turn around. You don't need to knit any special selvage stitches or anything. Uh, we will be seaming uh, the mitered squares together anyway. So just knit across the second row as well. Now, three stitches here before the stitch marker, we need to knit a center double decrease. So right in the middle of the project. Sounds scary? Not at all. Here's how to do that. So slip two stitches knit wise, then knit one stitch and then pass the two slipped stitches over a bit like a binder. Then we need to take away the stitch marker knit one stitch and place the stitch marker one more time and then continue knitting. I'm going to show you the center double decrease using a different yarn next. So here's how to knit the center double decrease one more time. Slip two stitches knit wise, knit one stitch and then simply pass those slipped stitches over the one you just knitted and there it is. And as I just said, from here, continue knitting across the rest of the row. And here on the return row, it's knit stitches all over again. And here in the middle, you slip the marker, knit one. And the stitch remaining from the center double decrease, you purl that stitch. And then you continue knitting. You will have to repeat these two rows over and over again. So in the, on the right side, you always uh, knit a center double decrease in the exact middle. And in the return row, you purl the stitch remaining uh, from the center double decrease. The rest is just knit stitches. 
So I finished knitting across 18 rows and now there are only 71 stitches left on my needle and now it's time to join in a new color. And the easiest way to do this is simply tying a simple knot here around the tail or the end of your old color. Leave a nice little tail for weaving in later on and then simply slide this knot here all the way to the base of your last stitch. And then pick up the new color and start knitting. It's as easy as that. And you change color, but the repeat doesn't change. So you continue knitting across all rows um, and knitting a center, double a decrease in the middle, which you will purl in the return row. So um, the repeat stays exactly the same, only the color uh, changes. And if you're following my pattern, you would have to knit a total of 26 rows in the white color. And as you can see here on the wrong side, you get a little, well, marbled ridge. Here it's a really nice transition and here it's a bit marbled. And that's why I said you absolutely need to um, make sure that you switch colors on a right side row, except you really like this pattern. And then of course you can switch things up as well. So a couple of rows later, I quickly wanted to stop here, not only to see how things are going on your end, but also as a quick reminder that now would be an excellent time to measure your square and see if your initial calculations worked out. Knitting can be quite deceiving and if you measure too early, say after three or four rows, things will appear to be much stretchier than later on. So please wait a bit. And then if you notice things are maybe too small or too big, you need to figure out what you need to change. Maybe you need to go down one needle size or cast on one, two, three, four, five more stitches. But please don't overthink it. Your knitting is quite stretchy, especially garter stitch. And if your square is off by a centimeter, then that's not thing to worry about. You can adjust this through blocking later on. But if it's more, then you should definitely consider unraveling and starting all over again. Because the thing is, we will be sewing two of these squares together. So if this square is off by three centimeters, then the neighboring square will be off by three centimeters as well. So that's a total of six centimeters and there and then things will get tricky. So let's suppose your square is three centimeters too big. What do you do? Well, simply measure out those three centimeters, count the stitches and then subtract twice that number from your cast on and start again. So 26 rows later, I finished the white section and I wanted to show you two things. First of all, you might lose track and to count garter stitch, it's actually very easy. See those ridges here and each of these ridges stands for two rows. So if you are wondering, well, did I um, knit enough rows already? Well, you can simply count those ridges. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen times two is twenty-six. So I'm at the right position to change my blue yarn. As an alternative, you can also count the stitches before for the double or after the double decrease to check. The second thing I wanted to show you is a different way to join in a new color. So I picked up the new color the way I usually would hold my yarn. And then I insert my knitting needle into the first stitch and place the new yarn here in between. Then I cross the old color, wrap it around the knitting needle, knit one stitch and pull through. This method is called twist and weave and I'll link it to you up in here in case this was too fast. And if you are one of those who hates weaving in ends, here's another trick. Knit one stitch and then wrap the tail of the old collar around your working yarn. Knit one stitch, 
wrap the tail around and thereby you will weave in the tail as you go and you won't have to weave it on later on. Um, just weave in the old color. We will need the tail of the new color later on for seaming. So just weave in the old tail and continue doing this for around, well, six to eight stitches, depending on how fuzzy or slippery your yarn is. In this case, I'm working with a plant-based uh, yarn. So I'm going to do this for, well, 10 stitches or so, but with a standard wool yarn or so, six might be enough. And then continue knitting with just the new color. So 18 rows later, this is how my little square looks now. And now it's time to join in the dark blue yarn, in my case at least. And I'm going to join it in with twist and weave again. So you can see the technique one more time. I really, really love this technique. And it seems to be quite complicated at first, but once you've done it a couple of times, it's actually quite easy. And I promise you, you won't be uh, willing to join yarn with a different technique anymore. It's just this brilliant. And from here you need to uh, knit 24 rows in the dark blue color, but really just continue uh, with the standard repeat until there are only three stitches left. So it's going to be always the same. So here I am and there are only five stitches left and now you need to decrease those last stitches. So the pattern actually doesn't change, but um, I still wanted to knit those last stitches together with you. So you place a central double decrease here, turn around and as you can see, I already dropped my stitch marker because I actually don't think I need it anymore. And you know, that slipping is kind of annoying. So here are my uh, last three stitches. And now you, uh, let me get my needle. And now you knit another uh, central double uh, decrease here into these last three stitches. Another central double decrease here. Pass these stitches over. And there you go. You finished your first uh, square or mitered square for your pillow cover. And now you can cut the tail here and call it a day. So this is how my finished uh, square looks now. And from here, there are two things you need to do. First of all, you finished one square and we need altogether eight. This means you need to knit another seven squares, identical squares. You could also knit only three, three more identical squares and choose a different uh, pattern for the wrong side of your pillow cover. But in this case, I want eight that are exactly identical, but we are going to sew them together a bit differently on the wrong side of the pillow cover or on the other side of the pillow cover. So you get two sides. Still, I want to mention it. And the second thing you absolutely need to do is you need to block your finished mitered square. Depending on the fiber you are using, you may want to steam block things. So maybe you are using acrylic or cotton yarns, then steam block, or you can wet block um, your mitered squares uh, in case you are using your standard animal fibers like wool or so. I am using this special blocking mat here because it has this grid here and I feel it makes uh, blocking all squares in the Exact same size, much easier. But at the end of the day, you could also use a towel on your carpet or your ironing board or something similar. And you can block your squares right after you finished one. No need to wait until you have all eight together. Either way, from here, you need to knit seven more squares and I'll see you there. 
So, I finished knitting all my eight mitered squares. I already blocked them so they are all the exact same size. And now it's time to assemble the pillow cover. This means we need to start sewing. Now the thing is, it will be a lot of black and on black sewing. So I figured you would appreciate if I showed you the technique using these swatches in cotton yarn first. We will be um, joining these mitered squares. So these little ridges meet in the middle. And this means we need to um, join them cast on edge to cast on edge. And this actually means we need to graft stitches. Sounds scary, but it's totally easy. Let's show you how to do that. Okay, thread either the tail if it's long enough or a spare length of yarn on a tapestry needle. And then you need to align the two squares you want to join. So uh, the cast on edge and the other cast on edge are facing each other and these ridges here um, meet in the center. And now you have to, well, let's talk about the anatomy of a knit stitch first. So if you take a look at your garter stitch swatch, you can always see these knit stitches and they produce these Vs. See these Vs? They are all over the place. Everywhere are those Vs. And you need to find the very, very first V on this side. So not this V, but this V. And it will be hidden here on the uh, side. And you need to pull your tapestry needle underneath that. And the other thing you will see, there are those ridges. And these ridges consist of a top pearl bump and a bottom pearl bump. Top, bottom, everywhere. And we, you need to find the first top pearl bump here on this side and pull the tapestry needle through that. It's very, very important that you find the first ones on either side. And then you need to go underneath the adjacent uh, top pearl bump, so this one, and pull your tapestry needle underneath that as well. And then you need to go to the other side again. And here is the next V. Pull your tapestry needle through. And then you need to get out through that pearl bump on this side again. And from here it's rinds and repeat. So find the next pearl bump. Go underneath that. Find the next V here. Go underneath that. Go out through the same pearl bump. Go underneath the next one and so on. So let me finish. So you can see where we are going. And as you can see, this will join a garter stitch together in an utterly invisible way. On the wrong side, it's quite invisible as well. So it creates, well, a little ridge, but barely so. So this is a wonderful uh, technique to um, join mitered squares together, cast on edge to cast on edge. I have a full video on grafting garter stitch. I'll link it to you up in here in case this was too fast. And before we move on to our uh, real project, I need to show you one more technique because we will also need to join um, edge stitch to edge stitch. And you can do this with a simple mattress stitch and I quickly want to show you how to do that as well. So thread the tail on a tapestry needle or a spare length of yarn. And then you need to find the last or rather first uh, no, last, last um, cast on stitch here on this side. So uh, sometimes things are drawn together here. So make very sure that you find that very first cast on stitch and pull your tapestry needle and the yarn through that. And now garter stitch, as I said, consists of these ridges and there's always a top and a bottom pearl bump. And you need to find the very, very uh, first bottom pearl bump on this side. So here's the very first ridge. 
and you need to go all the way to the end and then find the very first bottom problem, which is this. It, they, those, they are often, you know, drawn here to the middle and they appear to be, well, they don't look like all the other bottom problems, but there it is. And you need to um, pull, probably pull out your knitting a bit because often um, the cast on and the, the bottom problems, they sort of are easy to uh, mix. So you need to find this little bottom problem and pull your tapestry needle through. And here on the other side, we are going to pick the top problems. Those are usually much easier to identify and pull our yarn through. And now you need to move up one ridge. So we covered this ridge. Now it's time for the second. And again, find the last bottom problem and pull your tapestry needle through. Then go over to the other side, find the next top problem, pull your yarn through. Bottom problem on this side. So you always move up one ridge with every repeat. Let's do one more here on this side. Sorry and one on this side and after you a couple of inches like one or two you can pull tight and see you join those mitered squares together in an utterly invisible way again i have a full video on doing mattress stitch for garter stitch here on youtube so i'll link that to you up in here as well so now that we practice crafting, it's time to assemble our pillow cover. And again, we need to do it cast on edge to cast on edge. So thread either the tail or a spare length of yarn on a tapestry needle. And then find that very first V here and pull your yarn through. And then get out here through the very same stitch and pull tight. And now you need to find the next top pearl bump. Where is it? There it is. Next pearl, top pearl bump. And go underneath the second V here on the other side. And I actually recommend uh, finishing two uh, squares and then start seaming right away. There really is no need to wait until you finished all eight, um, eight squares. In fact, I would say uh, if you do that, it, you have to do a lot of seaming and uh, crafting in one sitting and that can be quite a bit dull. So uh, rather just finish two uh, mitered squares and then seam them together and then knit the next pair, block them and so on. I find this makes the whole process a lot more enjoyable, but I mean, I just wanted to point it out to you. Maybe you are someone who really, really enjoys seaming and you are actually looking forward to do that. So who knows? Anyway, continue grafting until you reach the very edge here. So 50 minutes later, I seam together these two squares and these two squares. And now it's time to form there. We have two rectangles here. So we want to turn them into one big square. So there's one more seam we need to finish. So we have to seam here all the way across and it's going to be the exact same technique. So uh, thread a tail, the tail on the tapestry needle if it's long enough or um, pull a spare length of yarn here through the first stitch. And then it's going to be the exact same technique all over again. So uh, go underneath the first V of a knit stitch here on top and then get out through that stitch and so on. Uh, I'm not going to show you this technique uh, one more time. Uh, it's all the same and I'm going to fast forward a bit um, because I want to show you uh, another technique or how we proceed from here. 
So I seamed together all four squares for the front of my pillow cover and now it's time for the back and as I said in the introduction of this video I want a different orientation uh, of these squares for the back sides so I want to uh, join them together like this so we get those four uh, concentric circles and this means we have to seam um, the edges together using mattress stitch for garter stitch the way I showed you before. So this means thread your tail on a tapestry needle and start seaming here on this side. Um, I'm going to fast forward a bit here so until we get to uh, this point here so you can see it a bit better. Now I finished seaming together this section and um, I'm actually changing yarn here. So, and that's why I told you to leave a long enough tail when you join the yarn to leave a long enough tail so you can do the seaming. Because the thing is the mattress stitch for garter stitch is invisible, but if you are using a slicker yarn or so, sometimes it peeks through. And that's why I decided to, um, do it a bit differently and use the tails here from the uh, where I joined yarn. But otherwise, uh, this is a super easy technique. Let me get this out of the way here. So as I said, you always go through a bottom pearl bump here on this side. They're often not that easy to see because they, as you can see, they are sort of slanting down or to the back. But once you know that, you can adjust things and then see them all the way uh, to the top. Top problem, I think this is. Yes, sometimes it feels like you skipped one, but you didn't. So seam all the way to the top and once you finished this section, you obviously need to seam, uh, pick up this color, seam this section and then all the way to the top. I mean, give it a try. If your yarn is super fuzzy, you can probably seam all the way to the top using one color and you won't notice a thing. Here, I for this yarn, I noticed um, there is a slight difference and uh, it's not all that difficult to pick up the yarns especially as you need to weave in these tails anyway one way or another so I feel why not just use them for seaming and once you finish the section you obviously need to weave in those tail here or the rest of the tail here on the back side and you can do this any way you want for example I mean here we wove in um, the yarn as we went. So why not go a couple of stitches in the other direction doing the exact same thing. The only thing I do differently here is I try to split the yarn as I weave a my tail around for a couple of uh, stitches like so. And again, this widely depends on how uh, slippery or fuzzy your yarn is and how far you want to go. And now that we finished this section, we can start with the next section. And it's always the same. You only do it in different colors. Bottom pearl bump on this side and top pearl bump on this side. Um, the mattress stitch for a uh, garter stitch is not widely known, but it is in fact so simple and quite invisible. So I feel this is a technique that deserves a lot more attention. And just, mo just one more thing here for those very last stitches. I pierce right through them on either side. Go underneath that weave and then pull tight. Stretch things out a bit. 
and you joined even that last stretch here in a super invisible way. So I finished seaming together these two squares. This is the way the wrong side looks. I mean, it's neat, but there are obviously all those tails here, but no one is ever going to see this uh, wrong side anyway. And here on the right side, it is barely visible. There is this little line here that you can see in the right kind of angle, depending on how the shadows fall. But I think it's something you can absolutely live with. And since there are those, um, uh, pronounced ridges here anyway, it sort of looks like a feature. From here you need to seam two more squares together in an identical way, so using mattress stitch, and then you need to seam together the resulting rectangles together here along the central uh, seams, and then you will have two squares front and back of your pillow cover, and I guess I'll see you there. So I seamed all my little squares together and this is how things look like now. I also wove in all the remaining tails on the back side. By the way, if you want to know how I weave in tails, I'll link you my full tutorial up in here with 10 different techniques. Now this is going to be the back of my pillow and this here, let me show you, this is going to be the front. Now you don't have to put your squares together like this. You could also knit two identical big squares like this or like this, whatever you prefer. And from here we have to put things together. So this means we have to seam these edges here, these edges here together. But obviously we also need a little opening down here where you can um, uh, stuff in your cushion and this means if you know how to sew you could uh, set in a zipper here at the bottom but since this is a knitting uh, video we'll stick to knitting and now it's time to join the front with the back there are probably a hundred different ways to join a cast on edge with a salvage stitch when it comes to garter stitch. So I can only show you the method I prefer in this case, but if you prefer a different method, then please use that one. I used some pins for a uh, provisional join and of course uh, the wrong sides should face each other. Let's use my little swatches here to show you how I seam things together. So. I go here right through the edge stitches. And then here is the cast on edge. Let me separate this. This is the cast on edge. And there's always an, uh, an outer loop and an inner loop. And I go through the inner loop. And here on the other side, I go through this bump here. Let the yarn here through this bump here. And let's do that one more time. So inner cast on edge and right here through the bump. Inner cast on stitch and Right here, that bump. Let's do it one more time before I show you the result. So inner, let me pull tight. So this is how it will look. And um, I feel in this case, when you fold things over, it will result in the neatest transition. Now back to the real uh, pillow cover. I really like this technique in this case because it creates, let me finish that stitch. I feel it creates a really nice and um, clean edge here for a 
pillow cover. If this was a blanket, I probably would join things together using a different technique. But in this case, I think it's just perfect. And from here, you will have to finish all three sides and I'll see you here for the bottom. So let's show you how to pick up stitches. Uh, this is easier if you use a knitting needle one size smaller, but you can use your uh, the one you used all the way as well. Now remember those bottom pearl bumps we used for the mattress stitch wheel. You simply need to slide the exact same uh, bottom pearl bumps here to your knitting needle. So go through each little ridge here and pick up. I hope you can see this and pick up those bottom pro bumps and slide them back to your knitting needle. So I slipped all those bottom pro bumps back to my knitting needle. So now you can simply turn your work around, pick up the black yarn or whatever yarn uh, or whatever color you want for the seaming and then simply knit across that row. And from here you need to knit all together three more rows in garter stitch. If you use it, if you are using a thicker yarn, you might get away with only one. So I finished these three rows and I'm back on the right side and now we need to add buttonholes. I want to add four buttons, but you could also just do three or maybe five. And the size of those buttonholes obviously will depend on your buttons. My buttonholes are going to be three stitches wide, but maybe you only need two or four. There are many different ways to knit buttonholes, but since this is no garment and those holes are not going to be visible anyway, I'll show you a very simple method suitable for beginners. So I knitted four stitches here and now I simply bind off three stitches. One, two and three. Three stitches the regular way. And then I continue knitting. So I continue knitting until in garter stitch until it's time to place the uh, next buttonhole. And I'm going to place it here right in the middle of that uh, first mitered square. So I'm going to knit across a couple of more stitches. And then here I'm going to bind off another three stitches. One, two and three. And it, this really doesn't have to be uh, exactly here in this spot. If you're off one, two or even three stitches, it really won't matter. And then I will place another two buttons here on this side in a similar manner. And here in the immediate return row, I will add three backward loop increases to bridge this gap. And if you bound off more stitches, you would have to add more uh, stitches. So place your thumb here above a yarn and simply add a little loop. One, two, and three. And then continue knitting in garter stitch until you come to the next buttonhole. And there we will add another uh, three stitches to bridge this gap. So here we are. So one, two, and three. And uh, continue uh, doing this or closing all the buttonholes in that manner. And from there you need to knit another 10 to 12 rows in garter stitch and then bind off 10 or 12 more rows in garter stitch. 
just just one quick note here as you come across these cast on stitches in the next row go slowly they can be quite uh, tricky to work through so take your time there's no need to hurry and knit carefully so they don't accidentally slip off or so and again if this was a uh, visible buttonhole i would definitely pick a different technique but here for the inside of our pillow fast and easy works out out just fine again from here all together 12 more rows in garter stitch so i finished those rows in garter stitch and bound of all stitches and this is the way things look like now here are my buttonholes. I also closed these seams here on the sides. It's the exact same technique. So I won't repeat that here. The last thing we have to do is we need to attach the actual buttons here on the inside of the pillow. And I'll quickly show you how to do that. So I turned my pillow cover here inside out. And now I will fold this tab here over and I hope you can see this here is my little buttonhole and what I'm going to do is I will pick up one of these stitch holders and place it here through the buttonhole through the buttonhole and attach it and then I'll do the same for the next little buttonhole and go through one of the pearl bumps and in that manner I will know exactly where to attach the buttons and now I thread a spare length of yarn on a tapestry needle to attach the buttons I am using buttons I hope you can see this I am uh, using buttons with a loop here uh, on the back side and not a standard a button with four holes here because um, that way I can attach these buttons without uh, piercing through the fabric but you I mean I am sewing here black on black so it's not going to be visible anyway but that way I can avoid going through the fabric so what I do is I go through one of these pearl ridges here one of these pearl ridges here then I pull the yarn through and I remove the stitch marker we are not going to use that anymore and then I just go a couple of times a couple of times through the eye and that pearl ridge actually just you know maybe just three times three four times so actually not as much as you might uh, suspect because you know this button is not going to see a lot of wear and tear so basically you're just you know closing that pillow once to stuff it and then maybe another like once a year to clean things out so i don't think you really need to overdo this and then I tie a little knot I tie a little knot here then maybe uh, wrap the yarn around uh, two times two times tie another knot and then I mean this is not entirely needed and then you can pierce through that um, through that stack here you can pierce through that stack here like once or twice from either side to secure things and then you can already uh, cut away the excess and that's already it so this is it I attached all my four little buttons here on the inside and if you have been knitting along I guess it's time to congratulate you I know it was quite a lot of seeming but I feel it's so worth it definitely be proud of yourself 
I for one will quickly stuff this pillow cover with my cushion and show you the results. So here we are back in my living room and this is my finished pillow. Isn't it beautiful? Uh, please excuse the harsh studio lighting. It makes uh, the white reflect underneath so you can see it a little bit peeking through. Again, I want you to know that you can combine these miter squares any way you like. You can have two identical sides or mix things up like I did here. That's entirely up to you and your preferences. I personally prefer this side here, but again, up to you. Now I would like to add a couple of more pointers. First of all, I picked this yarn and this needle size because I felt it works extremely well with the little couch on my balcony. And I'm very, very happy with the result and the texture it adds. You know, it's just a lovely contrast. As a beginner, I would probably pick an easier yarn, but for cushions, I actually think you should dare to experiment a bit and use a yarn that is maybe a little bit more unusual. I mean, sure, you can knit this with 100% wool, but since you will never wear it, I think you can use this opportunity to toy a little bit around with a different kind of yarn and add a lovely different texture to your home. The second thing I would like to add is that the way I closed the bottom here with buttons is not ideal. Typically, I would line both sides with a ribbon and then set in a proper zipper. But of course, this is not a sewing channel and I want you to keep things as accessible for beginners as possible. And in a way, it really doesn't matter because when your pillow rests on your couch like this, who is ever going to see the underside? So sometimes you can worry about these little details a little bit too much. Either way, I hope you had fun knitting along. Please like this video if you enjoy watching, comment with your feedback and your questions. And of course, don't forget to subscribe in case you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.